I think we can start. <laughs> Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, nursing varies in each country is influenced by many factors, including culture, educational methods, and legal regulations. However, what certainly unites nurses worldwide is their desire for development, creating new projects and searching innovations that could improve patients' care. The best proof of this is the Queen Sylvia Nursing Award. It is also worth mentioning that the Polish edition of QSNA is organized by the Medical Foundation. Uh, we welcome to the second meeting in the series of the meetings with inspiring personalities in the field of nursing care. Today, we are meeting the laureates of QSNA to learn about the ideas for the development of nursing and patient care. The girls will also share their thoughts uh, on the role of leadership in our profession. So now, we would like to warmly welcome our guests for today, the Queen Sylvia Nursing Award 2022 laureates, Mary Svensson and Sarah Rosenberg from Sweden, Sonia Myers from Germany and Dominika Rachbau. She is the laureate from Poland, who is also a student from our university, Jagiellonian University. Uh, welcome to the authorities of the Jagiellonian University, lecturers, nurses, students, and all of those interested in today's meeting. The meeting will be hosted by representatives uh, of the Student Scientific Association of Basic Nursing, Zuzanna Szczegiel and Karina Szubertowska. Sarah Rosenberg is our first guest. She is a nursing student at Christian Stand University from Sweden. Driven by her experiences in nursing, she designed it the Dignity Shower Gown, which is a breathable garment designed for patients uh, who need assistance uh, during the bathing process. Unfortunately, Sarah couldn't be with us in a person today, but she found a way to share her project and thoughts related to leadership in nursing with us. Now we would like to invite you to watch the video rec recorded by Sarah. What is your project about? Hello, my name is Sarah Rosenberg and I am a nursing student from Sweden. I study at Kristianstad University and I still have one year left until I become a nurse. I was fortunate enough to be the winner of the Swedish Queen Sylvia Nursing Award in the category nurse or nursing student. My project is called the shower gown and it's a it's a piece of clothing that the client can wear in the shower to protect dignity and also keep the integrity of the client. I actually have a prototype. <laughs> I haven't really showed this that much, but it looks like this. Uh, so it's kind of like a coat that you can put on and it allows the water to pass through and also the soap. So you can massage the client like with easy hand uh, to let the soap pass through and also mechanically remove the dirt or residues or whatever the client has on the skin. Uh, and then also uh, the idea is that the shower, like you're able to shower off all the residue soap as well from the outside. So the client doesn't really have to be naked in front of the care professionals or nurses. Uh, it also works as a kind of compromise. Uh, I noticed when working with clients with dementia, some of them didn't understand why they had to remove their clothes. So this could be a kind of exchange. So instead of telling them to remove your clothes, you can say, Let, let's change into the shower gown. I think something is wrong with Karina's internet connection. <laughs> Sorry. Could you share your sources of inspiration for the project you presented in the competition? The idea of the shower gown came to me when I worked uh, last summer 
at a special care facility for people living with dementia. Uh, I noticed that some of the people didn't really want to remove their clothes and I thought that maybe there was a way to compromise and still be able to shower but that you didn't need to be naked. Uh, I noticed that a lot of people didn't really like to be naked in front of uh, other people and especially living with dementia the people that you have to dress naked in front of might be strangers uh, so I really felt like I could understand the struggle because I would never want to undress naked in front of strangers like that um, and also I guess the inspiration also came to me since I had been studying for one year at that time uh, we had been learning a lot of a lot about personal person-centered care uh, in my university so I felt like I wanted to make like even the shower situation a bit more personali personalized and also um, like listening to the clients different needs some clients maybe didn't have a problem getting naked and getting in the shower and being showered by other people but I did notice that some people did so instead of just forcing them all to just undress and be naked and all of that um, this is a way for me to reintroduce the person-centered care uh, into dementia care So maybe I will ask the last questions. Uh, what are the next steps or goals for the future? My next steps or goals for the future is firstly to finish my degree. I would like to be a nurse by next summer. Uh, if everything goes as planned, I will be a nurse uh, in June next year uh, and also this summer uh, I'm working at the emergency in the hospital close to my home um, that's why I had to do this video because I was supposed to work day shift but they changed my shift to night shifts so while you're watching this I'm working at the emergency room <laughs> uh, and regarding my project uh, for the future, I would like to continue to develop th this idea to make it even better uh, and also like maybe find companies to work with to actually make this come true, like the, the shower gown. I would like to make it like in bigger scales so that every hospital or elder care facility or a special care facility uh, etc could have this option to offer their clients uh, well and also like <laughs> learning a lot <laughs> that's also my next steps and my plans for the future I, I really want to learn a lot and become a great nurse so that's what I'm all about right now <laughs> Uh, thank you very much to Sarah for sending the video. We appreciate it so much. And our second guest, and also the first one we welcome live today, is Marie Svensson. Marie is Sweden's first Queen Sylvia Nursing Award winner. She observed the profound influence of nature and animals on dementia patients. Um, says Marie, we who work close to people can be impactful, and I'm proud to be there for them. And these words are very inspiring, Marie. Thank you for them. And they will definitely stay in the hearts of many of our listeners. So um, let's start with uh, the first question. Please tell us what is your project about?
So can you hear me now? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, my project is to improve relationships for people living with dementia with the help of animals and nature. My idea is to place the care activities in the right environment with closeness to the animals and nature. Then we create an environment that makes the elderly people feel better. My husband Lars and I have bought a small farm that has been in my family where I run a daycare for people with dementia today. We are open during the day and those who come stay at home in their houses or apartments. By staying among, among am animals and nature, I offer them an environment that is suiting and triggers many memories. The daycare is called Gärdet and the aim is for everyone to feel at home and to be with the staff to do what they want to do at the farm. Uh, we are doing person-centered care and get to know the person who are here. Uh, we bring in firewood, for example. We look at animals and the garden, which may sometimes need water, for example. We cook together and bake. The animals around us are our cows, horses, goats, pigs, sheep, uh, rabbits, cats, chickens and dogs. One dog. <laughs> we don't work with animals, but can make sure they have water. Maybe give them some grass sometimes or a carrot. Um, yes. That's incredible. And... Um... What or who inspired you when developing the project uh, you presented in the competition? Mm -hmm. This is uh, an idea that came about many years working of, of working in elderly and dementia care. I have seen the positive impact that animals and nature could have on older adults and especially with memory work. I have been inspired inspired a lot in my work. When you have seen for yourself at the work how animals and nature affect our elderly relatives and stuff. For example, we had dogs come visit to the work and we have aquariums. We have cats living in the elderly care and uh, we have cultivated and taken walks in the forest and garden or executions. Conversations come so much easier with the animal in your arms when you are and uh, or you are watching the animals on a distance. Also with the elements of nature in the garden, both to the smell, sounds and feelings. I have also attended a training course as Sylvia's sister which is an education institute by Queen Sylvia and provides special, special sins in dementia care. It has, it has inspired me a lot. Thank you for your work and for your answer. And winning the Queen Sylvia Nursing Award is an impressive achievement. Uh, what are your future plans now and how does this award influence them? Uh, I want to continue running the daycare in the form I have, but would like to receive more study visits and have the opportunity to spread, spread our weight of working, both at home in my, com in my community, but also in whole Sweden or other countries. This is because I believe we need to pay attention to the beauty of working with the elderly older generation who have so much to share us younger from the life experience. We, we who's working with elderly care must take more place in the community so the younger people wants to do the same. I have already, not, already noticed that the award helped me to spread about my daycare, that we exist and I have been able to meet experts in the field. Future vision, uh, I want to write a book, what we see at Gärdet. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you, Mary, for sharing your project with us. It's incredible. Our okay. next laureate of Queen Sylvia Nursing Award 2022, unfortunately, couldn't join us today. But just like Sarah, she decided to record a video for us. Sonia Myers from Germany is a nurse at Katharina von Bora Betangenhaus Vorwerker Diakoni. Her winning idea uh, is the Get a Go Bag, a bag that accompanies uh, patients on emergency visits to hospitals. Sonia also tells us about her project, inspiration, and future plans. So let's listen. What's your project about? Hey, greetings from Germany to all of you. I can't be here today, so I sent this message to you, but with my heart. <laughs> so um, have a great meeting today with Dominika, Zara and Marie. Uh, Dominika asked me at first, what is your project about? And so I wrote it down because my English is not the best and I'm a little bit nervous. So I will read it down here and my eyes will look down all the time, but I hope I look up a few times. So have fun. <laughs> I've designed a wash, a wash or sponge bag for emergencies. It will hang out during day and night in the bathroom of elderly people or people with special needs like dementia and also of course kids. It constantly contains documents like allergy alerts, medical lists, pacemaker ID cards and other important documents of the person and of course in dry pockets. Also, there are stable and waterproof cases in the back for the set of teas, hearing and visual aids during the night time. In an emergency, the person concerned drive through the ambulance to the hospital with his bag. At the hospital, the patients with special needs, as well as the clinical staff, will find all the important documents and helping aids in the bag. I baptize the bag Get A Go because you can easily get all informations of the patient in short time and go easily and fast to the hospital. And could you share your sources of inspiration for the project you presented in the competition? And my sources of inspiration for the project I presented in the competition was the typical, typical gap between the hospital and nursing homes where a lot of things get lost like in a black hole. I worked in hospitals, intensive care, as well as in nursing homes for people with dementia and in specialized clinics for children with neurological disorders. Also, there was one special patient to me, a really short and kind of cute old man with Down syndrome and leukemia, who went to hospital with no access to his typical kind of routine. Things he needed like a set of teeth were missing during the emergency and was, he was of course very sad and helpless. That got me really hard. So I try to change that. And what are your next steps or goals for the future? What are your next steps or goals for the future? My goal for the future is to make small impact, step by step, every day, for a better nursing, nursing care for patients and nurses and hospitals, daycare and of course nursing homes. I like to think creative and practical, so I will use it in my environment at work. I also got asked by my chef to do the practice facilitator soon, and maybe someday I will be a teacher for nursing students. These are my goals yet. And of course, I want to get the Get A Go back to life. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sonia, for the record. And our next and last but definitely not least is Dominic Dominica Rachrau. Uh, Dominica is completing her Master of Nursing Studies at Jagiellonian University in Poland. Uh, Dominica's project the Discovered World is her winning proposal. She recommends the production of panels that can feature a wide variety of sensory elements that include textures and colors, uh, as well as reminders of the care um, recipients past. So Dominika, uh, can you describe the nature of your project? 
Yes, of course. Hello, everyone. Uh, my idea is about creation of multisensory panels for patients with dementia. And the panels are fully disinfectable and made of safe materials. Such a panel can be uh, replaced on the bed of a laying patient. It features interchangeable sensory elements made up of a different colors, different structures and textures. And these elements can relate to everyday activities and objects that the patient has forgotten during the illness or is uh, in the process of forgetting. And the panel can be individually adapted to each patient's need and the severity of the dementia, of course. The patient can lie comfortably in the bed and contact with reality by touching the panel. And sensory has a huge impact on this patient. The main benefits I see in the, this, my idea, uh, is reduction, reduction of the stress and negative emotions. And I noticed that patients with dementia are panicked and stressed. When they get to the hospital, they are confronted with a change of environment. They are constantly trying to touch something and even sometimes destroy unconsciously the equipment around them because there is so much emotion in them and they can cope. And a panel like this could help them. It would also stimulate their brain and could improve communication and the patient relationship with medical staff and of course relatives. For example, someone from the team could ask, what time is it? And patient could show on the clock place on the panel. And with a sensory panel, patient with dementia could furthermore recognize colors, numbers, and letters. Thank you for your answer. And uh, could you discuss the sources that inspired your um, project for the competition? Yeah, so I was inspired by the cases I encountered during my work, as well as my studies. Uh, and I noticed that the patient with dementia needed to be in touch with reality. Everyone <laughs> would, would like to be in touch with reality. Uh, and which means that this, this patient uh, were constantly grabbing and scratching things and destroying things to feel the environment around them. And this made me think how important sensory input in this life such a person. So another inspiration for me uh, was that there, there are no tools that can reduce stress in this patient that can be used to communicate with them, of course. And as we know, there are sensory methods, but only for walking patients. And my idea was to create a universal tool that can be used in hospitals, care centers, and homes with laying patients with dementia. And I have another inspiration. So my inspiration also was my grandmother who became lying after an accident, but now luckily she's walking thanks to rehabilitation. And my dad constructed for her a special table where she can put up things like a remote control, like a phone, she can eat meal. And I thought that placing sensory elements on this type of table would be something innovative and would finally go some way to improve quality of life for laying patients with dementia. And hopefully I will be able to develop my project. That's amazing, thank you. And could you share your future pl plans with us? Yeah, of course. So the first thing I would like to do is find a sponsor who is willing and enthusiastic to participate in my project. As I start this journey, I'm committed to working hard and preserving to find such a sponsor. By researching out the potential supporters, connecting with important people in the field and demonstrating the value and potential impact of my project. And I'm gradually itching closer to achieving this 
critical milestone. And once I successfully secured the support of a sponsor and the necessary resources that I proceed with the development of the first prototypes, I would like to do scientific research. And my focus will be on investigating the quality of life, specific needs and the requirements of individuals with dementia. This crucial research will shed light on how we can enhance their well-being and provide them with the top quality of care and support. Research also gives me a kind of scientific base to produce my tool. And in addition to understanding the needs of people with dementia, I also want to learn uh, from families, caregivers, nurses, have other healthcare workers, of course, who play important roles in their life. What do they need? And by listening to their experience, challenges and goals, I hope to come up with a helpful, helpful solution. And I will use surveys, interviews, collaboration with healthcare professionals to gain deeper understanding of caregiving and find ways to improve it. And also, I have a, a lot of plans and I, I plan to uh, pursue a PhD at my university. And uh, PhD will give me a better understanding of the complexities of the dementia and a knowledge to contribute significantly to the field. And while my main focus right now is finding a sponsor, doing research and pursuing a PhD, I understand the importance of being beyond the present. To stay at the forefront of nursing innovation, I actively seek opportunities to expand my knowledge, skills and influence, attending conference, engaging in meaningful discussion, collaborating with fellow healthcare professionals, a ways to me create a supportive community as today, and that encourage creative solution for better patient care that improve quality of life. And in summary of, of this question, I, I know that it's long, long response, but in summary, my journey has begun to my determination to make a positive impact on the lives of people with dementia remains strong. And by finding a passionate sponsor, conducting through uh, scientific research, pursuing a PhD and actively engaging with the nursing community, I hope to revolutionize dementia care and inspire others, others to join me in, in this important mission. Uh, we would like to thank the girls for sharing their winning projects and congratulate them on their creativity, resource safeness and dedication uh, to the development of our profession. We uh, Now we are moving on the second part of our meeting, the discussion panel. Today's topic is leadership in nursing. As we all know, a good team is built on a leader who motivates action, sets an example for the team and knows how to lead it eff uh, efficiently. So let's start with Sarah Rosenberg. Sarah recorded a video for us with answers for two questions. First, she shares her thoughts uh, on the importance of uh, mentorship in nursing leadership. I believe that having a mentor uh, when being a nurse or studying to become a nurse is very important. Uh, during my internships, the, the, the nursing, well, the nurse that I go like besides <laughs> Uh, is a mentor for me and by seeing how he or she works it gives me like guidance to how I should strive to become um, hopefully like so far I've only had good nurses um, as my mentors uh, and they really is they really what's it called like I get really inspired when I see how they work and how open they are and how they are able to find the p patient's needs and how they are able to have all the knowledge, like not only about the healthcare system, but also out like the social security and all of those stuff. 
Um, in Sweden, we say like, you, as a nurse, you are the spider in the web. I don't know if it translates that good, but it's true. As a nurse, you, you have to know a little bit about everything and you also have to be the leader and the coordinator at the same time. So I believe that having a like a good mentor or several se several good mentors is crucial to becoming a good nurse because otherwise you would be so lost. Like how would you do uh, or how how would you learn? There are so many different like paths and so many different things that you have to know as a nurse. So without a good mentor. I would say it would be impossible to become a good nurse. And now uh, she'll tell us what she thinks uh, should be uh, the primary focus of nursing leadership in the current healthcare landscape. Let's listen. All over the world, there is a short staff of nurses. I believe that nursing leadership should primarily, of course, work with patients and make sure that patients are safe and that they're seen. And also the person-centered person care is very important. But also as nursing leaders, we need to, to understand that we are short-staffed. We need to find solutions also. And as nurses, we have to become uh, problem solvers. Um, so we need to find a way of how to keep our colleagues in the workplace and how to stay engaged and also how to be able to like change the leaders above the nurses. Um, I'm sure that we, all the different countries have different reasons why they're short staffed. Maybe it's because of the pay Maybe it's because of bad leadership and maybe it's because you don't really evolve, like your workplace doesn't really engage with education that much. So you don't keep evolving. Um, so right now, of course, I think nursing leadership, the important, most important, like the centered part is of course the patients. We need to keep focus on being good nurses, giving good care, but also there is the problem of being short staffed and with short staff and also leaders not really seeing this problem and not doing the correct uh, changes or whatever needs to be done. Uh, we need to really remember and do our best to give the best care we can. But of course, we can't do this like breaking our backs or anything. So I think it's equal. We need to focus on the patient, but we also need to be able to change the leaders above the nursing leaders so that something changes. Uh, thank you, Sara, for this recording. Um, next, we have prepared questions for Marie uh, Svensson. Um, Marie, how has your journey in nursing shaped your understanding and approach to leadership within nursing? So... Working in the field of nursing as an assistant nurse before I'm now, I, now I am a leader in my daycare means that I have a better, better understanding of what we all do. I work with the business myself, which is, which I could recommend the leaders to all take time to do at some point anyway. I now un also understand the difficulties for a leader to com come you how we want a job to be done because all of us who work have 
our own interpre interpretations and experience of how something should be done. Uh, and second question, how yes. do you envision your role as a leader in nursing following your victory in the Queen Sylvia Nursing Award? Uh, Queen Sylvia Nursing Award has strengthened me in my leadership role, role by confirming that I'm doing something good. That uh, my way of thinking, uh, that my way of thinking in dementia care is good as it is and should really only be developed in the direction I already have. I dare to be a present leader who is involved in the business and can catch immediately when the problems arise. Thank you, Marie, for your inspiring responses. Uh, and now we are going to watch a video sent by Sonia Myers. Uh, she will express her opinion about ways nursing leadership could evolve in the future to better address the needs of healthcare system and patients. In Germany, there is a great need for developed case and care management and especially the care after the hospital. Stay right now, the patients and the families of the nursing staff in nursing homes need to plan and organize most of their care after the hospital stay by themselves. So often people have gone on Monday out of the hospital and came back on Sunday at the same week because of infections or the family and the patients by himself do not understand what they have to care about and need in aftercare. So must have number one. Also the function of courses of study, scholarships and trainings in care need to be more clearly Right now, there is no exact limit and reach of a palliative nurse, a studied nurse, and a pediatric nurse. I, with a nursing degree in geriatric care, can work with children and was asked to work in management without study in nursing science. There are differences in know-how that need to be compensated or to compensate the lack of stuff first, maybe. I'm a big fan of advanced practice nursing. It was part of a study in Germany, in Lübeck, so I take take part in it for a HNP called Expand Care. The problem right now is that there are tons and tons of legal, legal barriers against the APN in other countries. They need to happen some things first. The third must have is that the documentation process borrows a lot of time during care. Computer softwares and programs need to be better to have more time for the patients and not that much time at the computers. Therefore, we need more nursing st studies at the patient's beds and doing a normal, normal day care. <laughs> Good nurses from other countries need to have their work and credits earlier. There are a lot of nurses from other countries around the world, which are great nurses with good knowledge and ethics but they work as uh, unlearned nursing assistants in Germany for one or two years because the process takes that long to get their working credits. And the language skills need to be better, so Germany need to prepare better courses for foreign speakers in medical languages. We need to be more politically dedicated so in the financial services get the way also to the needs of patients and people in nursing homes as well as the nurses and the material to work with. There is right now an imbalance we need to correct too. And now Sonia will tell us how important she thinks uh, it is for nurse leaders to be involved in policy making and decision making processes at higher levels of healthcare administration. In my opinion, it is basic premise to a high level of healthcare. We as a nurse and a nursing leader are the link and network part in healthcare systems between the patient's needs and the given healthcare resources. We are in the middle and inside of the healthcare systems. 
who better can talk about the healthcare systems and see the challenges and chances in the system itself. So I said earlier, we are the speaking piece and sometimes kind of the lawyer of the patient and elderly people in nursing homes and of course children and the parents in clinics. We could not be nearer the point of political matters in Germany. For now, so of course, we are very important people to speak and discuss with. What's need to change the new hospital care today? Have a nice evening. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Sonia, for your great uh, video. That was so valuable. Um, at the end of, um, of our discussion, we would like to ask Dominika Rachfau uh, two last questions. Uh, as an emerging leader in the nursing field, how do you define effective leadership in nursing? So, in my opinion, uh, effective leadership in nursing means having important qualities and doing certain things. Firstly, good nurse leaders are good at communication. They listen well, express them themselves clearly, of course, and give helpful feedback. And good communication builds trust, teamwork, and positive work environments. And secondly, nurse leaders are good at thinking critically and solving problems. They are skilled at understanding complicated situations, making smart decisions, and adapting to challenges in a changing healthcare setting. And they take the intubative to identify problems, find creative solutions, and promote practice that, the base, that are based on uh, evidence. And moreover, successful nurse leaders focus on developing and supporting their team members. Support is very, very important. They create a work culture that is encouraging and inclusive where everyone's contributions are valued and acknowledged. And through mentoring and coaching and providing opportunities for professional growth, they help their team members improve and succeed. And for me, another important aspect of effective nursing leadership is the ability to inspire and motivate others. Leaders lead by example, showing integrity, enthusiasm and commitment to providing high quality care to patients. They motivate their team by setting a clear goals, giving guidance and creating a positive and collaborative atmosphere. And effective nurse leadership also speaks up for the patient uh, and the nursing profession. They advocate for the needs and concerns uh, of the patient and ensuring that the care is focused on the patient, safe and one of the best quality. They also advocate for the advancement of a nursing as a whole, supporting policies and practice that raise the status of the profession and improve healthcare outcomes. And to sum up, effective leadership in a nursing includes good communication, critical thinking, team development, inspiration and advocacy and it means guiding and empowering others while caring for patients and promoting the nursing profession uh, next question how can nursing leaders drive positive changes in the healthcare and improve the standard of patient care as we know Nursing leaders play a crucial role in the driving positive changes in healthcare and improving the standards of the patient care. And you ask me how nursing leaders can drive positive changes and improve the standard of the patient care. So here it is. The first one is advocating for evidence-based practice. Nursing leaders can promote the use of evidence-based practice by staying updated on the last research and best practices in healthcare. They can encourage their team uh, to integrate evidence-based guidelines into their care delivery. And the second one is supporting inter interdisciplinary collaboration. 
And this collaboration among healthcare professionals is vital for providing comprehensive and, of course, holistic care. It's very important. And the nursing leaders can facilitate inter interdisciplinary teamwork by promoting effective communication, breaking down silos, and encouraging mutual respect and understanding. And by uh, fostering collaboration, nursing leaders improve care coordination and enhance the overall patient experience. And very important and crucial aspect is a patient-centered care. Nursing leaders can advocate for patient-centered care, ensuring that care delivery resolves around the individual needs, preferences, and values of patients. They can champion, innovate, die, prioritize patient engagement, share decision making, and cultural sensitivity. And by focusing on patients and their care, nursing leaders enhance patient satisfaction, promote better health outcomes, and increase patient safety. Next one is promoting staff development and well being. Nursing leaders recognize the importance of investigating in the team members, professional development and well-being. They support ongoing education, mentorship pro programs and opportunities for career advancement. And by nurturing their staff's growth and ensuring their well-being, nursing leaders cultivate and motivate it and skill workforce ultimately leading to improved patient care. And furthermore, engaging in healthcare policy and advocacy is very, very important, is crucial. And nursing leaders can actively engage in healthcare policy and advocacy efforts to influence positive changes at the border level. They can participate in a professional organization, contribute to policy discussion, and advocate for nursing roles in shaping healthcare policies. And by leveraging this experience and influence, nursing leaders can drive systemic changes and positively impact patient care. Thank you, Dominika. Your answers were priceless. Uh, the top of leadership is so important for our occupation and definitely should be widely considered in the future. Thank you, girls, for all your answers. Uh, we are approaching the end of our meeting. We would like to thank Marie and Dominika once again for their presence today, for sharing their knowledge and experiences with us. Uh, we also want to express our gratitude to Sarah and Sonia. They couldn't be here today, but still managed to share their ideas and projects with us. We would like to remind you that this is the first of our two planned meetings with the Queen Sylvia Nursing Award laureates. The next meeting will take place on June 12th at 6 p.m. Uh, we will be joining, uh, joined by laureates from Finland, Brazil, Germany and the USA. We also invite you to follow our social media. We are right after today's meeting information about the next even, uh, event uh, will be posted. We can't wait to see you again in a few days. You can press the red button on the gold stripe to register for the next meeting. Thank you once again for your attention. The meeting was hosted by representatives of student scientists, scientific a uh, Association of Basic Nursing, Zuzanna Szczegiel uh, and Karina Szybartowska. See you soon. Thank you so much. Goodbye and see you. Thank you, Mary, for participation. <laughs> Thank you. It was Thank nice you. to see you again. Yes, I hope it's been more time.